Danny, lots to talk about today. So um, I've got a couple editorials to start off the show. Okay. But uh, before we do that, uh, and a couple other things that uh, we'll get into uh, as the show evolves here with inflation, I've got a couple of trades. I want to follow up with some watch list ideas I gave earlier this week. Um, Alex is going to update us on uh, things that he's been doing with the special videos and how those trades are progressing. Hunter's going to give us all the stocks that go up on Monday. And then mm -hmm. as a follow on segment, He'll be doing all the stocks to go down on Tuesday. So that's Hunter's role that's today. Right. Danny, you will be wearing a shirt. Is that your dad's shirt? I, because of last week, yeah. and you brought that up. I wore this again in, in honor of Don and my dad both. Your chest hair is impressive. Um, I, I, I just leave it at that. You know what I'm impressed by? The amount of color still in that shirt. It looks like it's been run through the wash only a couple times. Oh, I mean, no, it's, it's been well it's washed. It's like a bright crimson. It's, well, yeah. it's very good. Well, it's if it's got to be clean, it's got to be tight. It's, it's um, my island shirt. Yes, Danny, you That's are right. definitely on an island. Yeah. Um, but I want to give <laughs> – thank you, Alex. I want to uh, give a trade. Uh, give a trade right off the bat. Right off the bat. Out of the, out of the shoot. Wow. Yeah. yeah, heaven forbid someone get pissed at me for uh, taking time to develop a show, <laughs> yeah. not, not get into the red meat. I get your hate mail. <laughs> so um, let me show you something that you can do at home. If you're, if you're at home, most of our listeners, I don't believe, are just sitting glued to their screens like I am. But I, I'm sitting here, and I know a trade that uh, I like to execute when I see it. And when I see something that developed on Friday, I thought, let me start the show off with this. And so I'm looking here at the ticks. And I talk about the ticks in the Wednesday video with you uh, often enough that I believe people who watch our videos, by the way, content six nights a week. Uh, you can find it on Revere Asset. You can find it in your inbox. If you subscribe, it's all free. We don't spam you. Or you can get it on YouTube. Uh, so when you see a tick explosion, to start the session, you want to laugh at tick exploding. <laughs> yeah, yes, I do. When you well, because the pre-show we were talking. Oh, yeah, right, right. <laughs> yes, yes. The, the show before the show, which we don't air for an egg for obvious um, reasons, very big reasons. <laughs> yeah, um, thirteen hundred and thirty-seven is is a big tick. <laughs> the. <laughs> <laughs> just queuing you up today. Yeah, I know. I'm trying not to take Low hanging fruit. It. Trying not to take the bait here. Uh, uh, 13, yeah, that was great. Uh, yeah, that was good. 1337, big tick. So there is a trade that you can do. I call it the tick fade. Okay. Uh, this is uh, someone had a. Nobody even wakes up seeing this trade. Someone taught me this years ago. Someone taught that person years ago. And so now hopefully I'm expanding the knowledge. Pass it on. Pass it on. on. And so when you see a tick like this, some, some big explosive tick. Um, for lack of a better way to say it, and I don't mean it as crass as it's going to sound, the, the market at that moment, when the market is open, is uh, proverbially shot its load. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so when it does that, you fade it to the upside. You can oftentimes take the opposite side of the trade, meaning you don't buy the S&Ps, you short the S&Ps. You can do it in a number of fashions. You can just go say, oh, I see that big tick, and I can go short it. But I'm going to show you a better way to do it. Conversely, the opposite is true. When you see a big opening down tick, a thousand and below, not 800, not 900 to the downside. Think 13 minus 1300 to the downside. That's when you want to come in and buy that market. But you need a trick, okay? And so let me show you what a trigger would look like. And so this is an hourly chart. So you want to take it down, take it down to five minutes if you want. But let's say 15 minutes is probably good enough here for government work. Government work today, Daniel. And so uh, a trigger could be now here's the market open at 8:30 central. And so you're looking right at 8:30 central. Notice how the five, the purple line, is coming through the eight and the 21. S separately to the downside. To the downside. Separately, you could take the five coming through the eight is your is your signal. You could take the five coming through the 21 is your signal. You could take the eight coming through the 21 as your signal. They're all signals. They just happen to all be... Uh, Slightly different momentum time frames. Yeah, but they're all happening at the same time in this right, one right. Five, 15 minute candle. And, and, and look, that move, uh, that move from uh, when, it, when it occurs uh, is 4,500 and we're now trading uh, 4,470. Okay? That's 30 S&P points. And so someone's like, well, 1030 doesn't really sound like a big number when you're talking like uh, thirty, you know, thirty-five thousand Dow. One S and P point is roughly equivalent to eight Dow points. So eight times that's two hundred forty Dow points. And you'll notice that the Dow did what? It gave up its two hundred and sixty, two hundred seventy point 
uh, gain right at the open. And then now I believe it's in the red. Well, I could just pull it up price instead of just thinking about it. Why don't I just pull it up, Daniel? Let's see it. There you go. Down now 100. That's a big swing. So it's not just down from the 250, 260 points. It's now minus 113. So that's a, over a 300 point swing, right? And so using the ticks with a trigger is an absolute day trade. And then what do you, well, how do you handle that trade? What, what kind of trades could you do? Trail up your stop no matter what you do. If I Let me just get that out of the way. You could, you could And this is for research and, and oh, yeah. education. Stock nerds and market monitors. Everything we talk about here is for your edification purposes only. Never ever to be misconstrued with advice, one advice, need advice, seek advice. All I want you to do is, in fact, give us a call at 855 Real Wealth. There you go. Okay. So, um, but what to use? Options come to mind. Yeah. And so, look, you can take today is zero day options. So you could take options that expire today. The easiest trade to do, and by the way, if this sounds like when I said options and uh, what I'm about to endeavor, and if it sounds like gobbledygook, this trade is not for you. And I don't mean that rudely. That means that you need to practice with this trade when you see it so you can take it. Yeah. Going live into the uh, fight with, without any weapons training is not a smart move to do. And so let me put my Tim Turpert on. Yeah. If you don't understand what he just said with the ticks and the move and the reversion to the mean or the yeah. short term momentum, you don't do it. Yeah. Just don't, don't do it. Just learn about it and start practicing. Paper trade. And you can even, I was about to say, you yeah. paper trade. And so you could buy zero day options like puts. You could buy, uh, you don't need to go into next week. You, and do it on the SPX. If you think it's a day trade. If yeah, you think yeah. it's a short it's a day term, trade. Short term. And so you do it on the SPX, but the easiest, most forgiving trade to do, sell the call credit spread. That's a bearish trade. You're, gonna, you're not going to sell calls naked. You're going to have a, you're gonna sell an at the money 4500 and you're going to buy for protection because you never know. You always want protection. <laughs> Absolutely. You, you could buy one five, five points higher, 10 points higher. I tell you, I tell people do it on the SPX because if you have a smaller account, uh, SPX doesn't count against your day trading. If you don't close it out, it's just, um, it just cash settles. And the SPX is commission friendly, meaning, um, you get tax status, but who cares uh, about the tax status? It's really more commission friendly. What takes 10 SPY contracts to do takes one SPX. And so now you're being more efficient. In terms of your capital and, and same risk, but a lot of people don't realize one S, one SPX contract is ten SPYs. So anyway, that is absolutely positively one trade you can do when you see that tick explosion. And and it's a day trade. You trail up your stop. Does it always work out as beautiful as this? No, no. There's nothing that works out beautifully 100 percent of the time. That's why in this country there's divorce. So, um, but when you see these kind of moves, you I absolutely positively want to point them out to folks. Is that clear? Yeah. All right. Let's let us move on with the show. So real quickly. Um, speaking of purple lines on a chart. I learned something new this week uh, and I want to share it with you. Look at this. Is that the McDonald's guy? It's Grimace. Yeah, yeah like the McDonald's big purple character. Grimace. Yeah. yeah I've, I've never known that. what Grimace is. And here's the thing. It turns out Grimace might be a taste bud. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> okay, Alex, can you did you get Alex's mind being just, blown in real yeah, time? Can we, I, just, I am my whole life been been fooled. Like I don't what what I don't know. I've never known <laughs> yeah, what Grimace was. What did you think he was before right now? No, I had no yeah. idea. Yeah, strange, I don't know. A taste bud? It was like a like a like a Teletubby kind of what strange Don shape. Thinks. Yeah, character. What does Don think? I, I would put him in the same category as like the cookie monster. <laughs> like the same <laughs> we need to get a monitor and see. <laughs> Sleep that up for there. A he, there he is. Perfect. <laughs> All right. So, anyway. What the hell? A taste bud. Like when you're sitting in the boardroom coming up with the characters, there's Ronald McDonald, there's the Hamburglar, there's Birdie. The, what, who else am I Mayor missing? McCheese. Birdie. What's oh, Birdie? oh, 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 Mayor McCheese. Mayor McCheese. <laughs> By the way, Mayor McCheese. Is that the best costume ever? Adam, it's got to be the best Tim, Tim, if you know every one of those characters, I, I mean, thanks, you need to stop going by the Golden Arches. That's right. 
Did you you're too con- comfortable. You're too comfortable there. Don't you remember the conversation where I was a husky boy? <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> Danny. We all, we all have a past. It's like Norm on Cheers. Tim was walked in, in, in the McDonald's. I go, Tim! Hey, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, back. so it was uh, Mayor Mc. Well, Saturday morning cartoons were my babysitter. So then McDonald's used to run it. I don't know if they still do run a ton of uh, lots of children's programs. Yeah, uh, Ronald McDonald, Birdie, Hamburglar, uh, Mayor McCheese. They had these two little things running around. Is uh, I don't know what the hell they were. Was there a fry char- character? I don't think there was. I don't know. I don't. I don't think there was a fry character. But yeah. then there was Grimace. And then there's Grimace. Yeah. What the hell's Grimace? Kind of, kind of Barney fry. the dinosaur kind of guy. Yeah. I don't see it. But then again, I've never known anyone to draw a taste bud out and walk around as a character. I love this headline from New York Post: Grimace exposed. <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's ran to reveal shocking truth of his identity. My God, that's a great headline. It's a good headline. It's a very good headline. Right so, words, real quick, Daniel, uh, editorial to, to start off the show. I have a couple. Of them here. Um, one, uh, as we come to the the best part about this show, right? Uh, it uh, <laughs> the, the fellas don't know what I'm going to talk about. Obviously, clearly they don't. Uh, <laughs> or Alex, Alex, I, I don't know if we caught Alex uh, in rare form when his mind was blown with the premise, but I feel like that's. But I can't see the fellas. I don't have a monitor to see the fellas when I'm talking. But I feel like that could be the screenshot, unless we just go. Oh with, no! <laughs> <laughs> unless we can get a dual screenshot of Don looking at Alex. With his Don shocked face. Um, anyway, some of the best parts of the show. So, uh, look, we, we uh, do things a little bit differently here, Stockner's Mark Lovers. The long-term listeners know, I think it takes about a month, four weeks of shows uh, for somebody new to come in and join us. To figure out what the hell you're talking about? Yeah, right. but, but once you do, you understand that you don't need to be glued uh, to your computer or your terminal for, for 23 hours a day knowing everything about the markets. You can actually laugh. And enjoy, and there's there's a lot of um, fun. Dare I say fun? And to, look, the market, highly entertaining. The markets don't the mar- trading itself shouldn't be your form of entertainment. Trading and investing should not be your form of gambling. Okay, but a means to an end. But yeah, and 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 that that means to an end could be philanthropic. That means to an end could be college education. That means to an end could be. Uh, not having to partake in a commercial for Medicare Part B, uh, you know, because you don't you don't want to be a part of Part B, and so as a washed up actor, yeah, yes, and so, uh, but but trading to me, and what we do here in the markets is freedom, and how we do what we do here in the markets is freedom. You can't see Zach sitting across from me. You can see Danny. You can see Alex. You can see Hunter. You can see Don pop Don up, and you can see me. And By the way, should we tell him where Don is? Hey, what nope. He's, nope, nope. Nope. Let him think. <laughs> nope. And so uh, the, how we've been able to build a business here and carve our niche out into the world is absolute freedom. And as we come up on the 20th anniversary of 9-11, when this show will uh, air, we, we send out the show uh, to all of our subscribers, uh, again, free of charge uh, at Revere Asset. Uh, Saturday morning. That'll be the 20th anniversary. And I, there's not anyone in this country who hasn't been affected by 9-11. And even um, Hunter and Alex, who were younger uh, when 9-11 happened. But there's just it, it's just that moment in time um, that shapes so much. And it, and it shaped me. Uh, for you know, I got winged. I, I picked my airframe out uh, the day on 9-11. Uh, my parents were on a plane in Pennsylvania. I didn't speak to them for 12 hours. I had no idea if they were on that plane that went down. It was, it was really scary. And then I was winged. And then before you know it, uh, I'm off to San Diego. And then three deployments later to Iraq. And um, what we get to do here is the absolute amazing amount of joy that you can do. I mean, like it, it's an amazing thing that we get to do here every week. And I think that you can, it can be lost with stock nerds and market lovers because they're in the fight, right? Like, the, 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 like inflation. We're going to talk about inflation here in a minute and CPI. And there's a lot of bad things going on right now, right? Like that thing with Afghanistan wasn't really pleasant to watch. I don't think anyone. No, no. Not at all. Like it was really painful to watch what unfolded there. Uh, maybe some more than others. And what's happening right now with COVID. There's a lot of negativity that can pervade the world. 
And what we aim to do here every day or every week, well, with the podcast and with, with me, with the videos, especially, but with the podcast is just bring joy because that's the ultimate assertion of freedom. Like we don't like Danny, Danny doesn't make me follow a script to fit your at home narrative. <laughs> like, like what we get to do here and, and the ability to be a part of your lives and talk about something that's based on capitalism is an absolute amazing thing. And it, and, and it's, it's not lost on me, but you can't have every show be this, this, uh, serious dead, you know, to made me feel pretty bad about not appreciating freedom today. You know, like you can't be that show every week and it's not, but the fact that we get to do this and then we get to share it with you. And then the stock nerds and market lovers, you know, they reciprocate back by emailing us, whether it's Dan or Hunter or Alex, Don, myself at reverasset.com, or you find us on Twitter. Like we get to be a part of your lives. And that in itself is a joy and a freedom that I, I just can't let, let go, not telling you how much we appreciate that, especially coming up on this anniversary. Now, let's do another editorial where I'm going to complain. So uh, let's have, we're going we're gonna to go into complaint fest here. Are you ready? Sure. Ready. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, look, you, there's a lot to be pissed off here about COVID. And there was a, how do I phrase a dictatorial speech given <laughs> about COVID recently that we'll just leave at that. I don't think that should be the focus though. Okay. Go ahead. What I think should, I think what people should be up in arms about, and by the way, there's a lot to be up in arms about, is testing for COVID. Okay. And what, and Danny, you and I haven't had this talk in a long time, but, but the way medicine is doled out in the world leaves Americans on the hook for the rest of the world. And that's what you should be pissed about, stock nerds. So the rapid test, when you go get them, and we have them at home, right? Okay, by the way, you can't find them where I live right now. You can't find them. They're not on the store shelves. They're cleaned out. By chance, we just happened to pick up some before uh, the, the surge right, right. took place. And we have some. And, and we've had to use them because I've got little, little ones, and they go, and you, is it crud or COVID? Like, that's the... That's the game when you send your kids to daycare. Is it crud? <laughs> is it crud or COVID? You know, and so it's like a really fun game. Oh, it's the worst. You know, <laughs> like it's the worst mother humping. Well, take number two. Uh, yeah, really. Tanya. Tanya called me. I was watching Reagan play volleyball. She had an away game, and she called me. She goes, "You need to go to a quiet place and call me." And I'm like, "What the? Like I thought someone died." Yeah, what's going on? Yeah, I'm like, "What?" She goes, "Remy might have COVID." Okay, why do you think that? Well, he has a fever, and I called the nurse, and she said that that's probably a good sign of COVID. I'm like. Okay, I thought somebody died. I'm actually relieved that this might be COVID. You know, and so she goes, I gave a rapid test. Uh, it came out negative, but they say that the rapid tests aren't as... It has thorough. a lot of false positives, false negatives. Yeah. Not so, accurate. That's not the point of the story. The point of the story is those COVID tests, I believe, were 2178 at the... Uh, at the uh, Drugstore. At the uh, Piggly Wiggly. Just under $22. Just yeah. under $22. Sure. And then, uh, and then at the with the dictatorial speech that was given, uh, I understand uh, we're going to now knock thirty five percent off the price and sell them at cost. Like that's a, that's that's a very specific number. I'm not making that up. There we're going to knock. So there's a thirty five percent margin on these tests. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to pause the story there for a minute. Now I'm going to tell you about the school district issue here. Oh no. So. They, uh, they put a new policy in the district that my, my kids go to where if you are, and this wasn't the policy before, but it is now, that if uh, you might not have COVID, okay, but if someone in your household has COVID, you now need to stay home, okay? Okay. First off, a lot going on here. And if, I, if it sounds like I'm, I'm going to be making fun or I'm cynical about things here, folks, it's because I am. What a bullshit policy. And I say that because this is as worthless as the mask sign on the Kroger. Hey, by the way, if you don't feel good, don't come in the Kroger. Who, 
Like you've made the, you've already committed to getting in your car and driving to the supermarket. That sign on the door ain't stopping you. Like, <laughs> like oh my gosh, hey Zach, I, I have a, I have a runny nose. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going in there to get the Doritos. Yeah, like no one's doing this, right? And if we're being realistic about life. Parents work, and, and in our country, with in, especially with inflation, you need two parents work, and they need to send their kids to school. So, if someone did, you know, came in contact potentially with someone who had COVID, maybe, and your kid doesn't have COVID, you know where that kid's going? School. And most districts out here where we live, Daniel, don't have online learning, and it's so effing disruptive to have your child go from uh, an in-person learning environment to an online learning environment when it's not just, like, I don't know why the district that I that, that we uh, belong to, I don't know why it, every teacher isn't firing up the Zoom every time they teach. This isn't the first time we're, this is, we now are in, we're now in the second, the second half of this thing, right? Phase two. Yeah, we're in phase two, man. Like, we learned some things in phase one. In phase one in our district, what they did was you had a separate teacher. It was all Zoom, like you had continuity, right? But here, the junior high and high school teachers should be firing up the Zoom every time they teach. So when someone has to be left at home because of the COVID, right? Because you're trying to do the right thing, they're not missing. They're just like they're just doing it from home, but same teacher, same interaction, same same kind of social Yeah, now dynamic. they're not doing that. They're saying you just got to catch it, keep up, and find out from a class. The, the school district sent home a note that actually said, oh, will I be allowed to question and answer? You know, question, will I be allowed to make up my assignments? Answer, sure you will. Good luck catching those effing lessons. You missed the teaching. Yeah. Horrible. That's not the point of the story. I editorialized my editorial. What I think stock nerds and market lovers and American citizens should be pissed about is what you're paying for these tests. As Americans, and we have talked about this ad nauseum before, it's been years though. We are subsidizing the world's health. The majority of healthcare breakthroughs, medical breakthroughs, medicine breakthroughs, medical device breakthroughs, anything that has the word medical associated with it, most breakthroughs occur in the United States. Because we're not socialized medicine, and I am not advocating for socialized medicine, I'm saying the beauty of capitalism is that the companies come here, they set up shop here because they can charge what they need to, to on with you know without gross you know there are, of course there's outliers, but they can charge what they need to to get a recoupment on their investment. Recoupment is a word. Is it? Eh. That's nah, no, not here. One second. So they can recoup yeah. their cost. Yes, recoupment. <laughs> so in, in Europe, these tests are a dollar. Mm. And so here's my problem. It's not it, my problem. Look, you, I don't want to have a divisive vaccine conversation. I want people to be able to test. If the test costs 10 15 or $20, $22.80. Yeah, it's expensive to test two. And there's only two. I think there's only two or three in a box. Maybe four. Hell if I know. You are not going to do this. The uh, cost to entry is too high. So yeah. Too, too big of yeah, a barrier to entry. It's too big of a barrier be... to entry. That's why the costs are a buck that's in Europe. Yeah. But in Europe, it's a buck. In Europe, that's what people should be pissed about. That they're gonna that we in America are subsidizing that cost. It they're shipping the test. Like it costs more to get them over there. Mm -hmm. What company makes them? Uh, it's a couple. There's a couple companies, but Pfizer's one. Uh, is it is it BNTX? I don't know. It and do you, and do you when no, you BNTX, get the test, do you get the result at yeah. home or do you have to send it in? No, you know. know it's it's home. No, these, are, know, these are home these are home rapid tests. tests. Yeah, it's, so, but I think people would be more wow. like, like I really believe that the, the spread would because there's breakthrough cases. It would be easier. To, it'd be easier to like, to like monitor because, because if you don't have symptoms, you know. But if you were just like in the in the habit, like because it's so cheap that I'll just test, right? right. Like what the hell? You should be doing it twice a day. Like, like well, like, like, like one, once a week. If, yeah. You know, like I don't know the like. Like let's just say it's once a week. 
Like, hey, every Sunday before we release ourselves back into the wild, sure. we're going to test. But if it's $22, you might be doing it once a month. Or, or right. you're only going to think you need or, or, yeah, right. or because your kid has a fever yeah. and you're afraid that he has it. Mm -hmm. and, and so this is ridiculous. <laughs> How is there not price? Uh, do not stock. Do not be the stock nerd that emails me about, well, Tim, you know there's different currency valuations. Don't be that jerk. And I know you're out there because you email me. That's true. <laughs> there's a, there, there's a bunch of jerks that listen to this show and email me. You know who you are, too. I'm, when people say, Tim, I really feel like you're talking to me when you're doing the show. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to you right now. That's right. Literally talking to you. So why is there not pricing parity? Why is it a dollar in Europe for these strings? It goes back to, and Danny and I used to discuss this when it was just him and I sitting in the back room. Having talks about why, why are like cancer treatments? It's the same medicine. And it's because cell gene has to, because there's a price cap in Europe, in France, there's a price cap in the UK because of the way they have their, their, their medical system set up. Whereas here, it's, it's much different. Another discussion. But we pay more. We subsidize. companies. We, we, yeah, right. We yeah. subsidize yeah. the rest of the world in this regard. But for just once, for a once-in-a-lifetime pandemic, can we get some pricing parity with this stuff? you got to be kidding me. We're well, never it's just like when the yeah. diabetes with insulin. Yeah, I mean, $700. Insulin was, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it should, it, it's, it's not hard to make. and. They mass produce it, but yet it was so costly to uh, people that had that. Walmart came. Walmart has come out. Um, did you hear this, uh, Alex? I don't know if you're vi you're versed on insulin uh, because maybe someone in your family uh, uses it or not. I, I no one that I know in my family uses insulin. I don't think I have that. a couple couple people in my family. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Walmart has their own insulin now, and they're selling it for a third of the cost. Like they're they've got they're circumventing the, 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 the yeah the health insurance just yeah, to get it. I threw them and pay the the the, the copay. Damn straight. Yeah. Hmm. Damn straight. Yep. Yep. And so, uh, Hunter, what's good? Our access ticker symbol. Can you tell me that real quick? Just fit Hunter on the spot. Yeah. What is it? GDRX. Thanks. Yeah. Relative. I'm a I'm a freaking uh, ticker spreadsheet. I, the amount of tickers I have memorized is absurd. Yeah. No. I. <laughs> me too. <laughs> the, the, I mean, the, this company came public. Um, oh, this is on a 15 minute chart. This is a newer newer to the market company. When did they come public last year? This is this like it's coming back up. Good RX is if you ever see the commercials on TV, it's the company you call, you know, like pull up on your phone because there's coupons for effing medicine that make it cheaper than what your insurance is. What, what, I mean, what a nightmare this is. <laughs> this is all for cocktail type stuff. How is this? How are we the most advanced civilization? Oh, now you're going to piss off people, Tim. I was going to say, watch out. <clears throat> <laughs> how are we this? Well, as a freedom loving citizen, I can say that. Celebrate freedom, Danny. Right. How is it? How, how can it be like this? Over a year into the pandemic? I mean, can you go on GoodRx and get a coupon for these guys, Starn Strips? How. We they should be handing these out like lollipops at a bank, man. They still do that. Well, I mean, if you're giving everything, I, point well taken. I mean, your your vaccine's free, so why why or or it, it should be you're give right. it up, give um, them out this. like candy, man. Give them out like hey, uh, like when you go into the supermarket, like they have the wipes for the cart. Even though we know now that this thing is an aerosol virus, it's not a touch virus; it's an aerosol virus. Mm -hmm. There should be strips. Like, like, you know, the greeter at Walmart when he waves to you when you're walking in on a test strip? Like, like, that would be a great way. Like, how many people would you stop from coming into the store because they didn't know? So I have, I have a question, and I, I, I'm waiting for you to shut me down because this is made out of complete ignorance. I'm just asking, is there a chance this pricing is, is conditional, designed to condition people to pursue alternative forms of treatment? Oh, are you no, saying it's profit? Is it, it, is it priced high on purpose? 
thoughts like to, uh, I, that i don't know i to mean, drive we, you to we we can we can all have conjecture or or sense I, I don't know cynicism, cynicism, cynicism excuse me about this issue but we are there's no question in my mind we are subsidizing the world here and that is not right because i believe that people i believe in my heart that people want to do the right thing yeah but when forced to make choices mm. you're going to you're you're going to send your kid to school because you have a job that if you're absent from they're going to fire you right even in this well just go get another job tim you know what man it ain't that simple it is not that simple. And so you're going to make those choices. And th that is not, I mean, for all, for, for all the brim and firestone in that, in that speech yesterday, you're going to knock 35% off the price of these strips? That's it? They're already outrageously expensive. Compared to Europe? Yeah. They should, they, they need, if you want to stop this, stop people, you know, just, just let them, let them, let them have the ability to take a test at home. I think people want to do the right thing, but if you don't test every day or not even every day, just once a week, how many people would you avoid? Oh my gosh. I didn't know I had this. Now I can, if you believe in vitamin D or no, zinc or, 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 Hey, maybe I don't want to give it to my parents who are immunocompromised or just older. Like, like there's a lot of things you'd like to know. But but price is a barrier here. Mm -hmm. The other thing too is companies, if they require, let's say you have over 100 employees and you're required to have your your workers uh, take get this vaccine, and um, they say if you don't, you're going to be penalized if not or fired. But the other thing is if the insurance companies that are with the the plan uh, that you're with the company when you get hired when you go under their healthcare network. Uh, they're going to have to cover that vaccine or the test. So if you don't get the vaccine, you stay at home, let's say, and work, it's going to be very costly to the companies to it, have their employees take that. This, this is a further, um, I don't want to go too far down this rabbit hole. And I'm but, not trying to no, take one side yeah, or the yeah, other. Yeah. No, it's just strictly talking about money and the yeah. company. No, I'm going yeah, to, I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to indulge you in this for a second because I believe you have a point. Um, yeah. Small and medium sized businesses are defined by the SBA, but I believe someone can look this up about 1,200 to 1,500 workers. It's not 100. Okay. It's not 100. It's like like small SBA is like, hey, man, uh, medium sized business, small and medium sized business. Um, it, it, if you have a large, or we're at 75% right now in this country vaccinated. Okay, I believe that's at least one shot. I don't know what this new level of, if you want, this new initiative is going to get. Uh, there, when you for for in children's vaccines, right? Like, there's a, a lot of argument. Like, well, kids got to have measles vaccine and uh, rubella, a bunch of other things. You're not nationwide, Danny. We're not above ninety percent. For those vaccines that are mandatory right now to get into uh, a district school or a college, and so um, the thought is that you're this won't get more than five percent more. Like th that five percent won't make a difference. But what Hunter, excuse me, Alex, what Alex said is true. Like we're gonna we're we're fighting for the like this last five percent, you know, to get to eighty percent. We're certainly not going to get to ninety percent. At, and at what cost to business, right? And what the cost of regulation to business? And there's uh, you can Google it, folks. The cost of regulation to business. And I'm not saying regulation is bad. You you want sprinklers at a business if it catches on fire. You right? You you want there you want work laws. You mm -hmm. want your business to not have asbestos. Okay. Some re there's regulation. I, let me frame it like this. Regulation can get out of control. <laughs> <laughs> and, <Thank you. laughs> and let me point out, yeah. the, as we're talking about 9-11, let me point out one of the best examples of this I have vividly in my mind. So I'm in my third deployment 
to uh, to Iraqistan. And uh, see what I did there? Yeah, I got Iraqistan. that. Iraqistan. Got it. And so um, I go advance party. So I take a small cadre of Marines with me, and we go set up the squadron before the main body arrives. Okay? So I fly a couple planes in and uh, land, and we literally set up shop. And this is my third time there, so I kind of know the lay of the land of all of some. And uh, we're uh, second and uh, second, no, just second and third. I was based out of there, so I've been there before. And um, all of a sudden, it changed a lot. <laughs> like it's a huge area; it's huge. And uh, we get there, we set up shop, and uh, it's so big you need to take vans everywhere. Like in vans would like they would run vans for for people like at certain stops, like bus stops. Yeah. So I go, hey, let's go get some chow with the Marines. I go to the chow hall, and I get on a van. And I climb in and, you know, it's a 15 passenger van. So I just climb in the back with the guys and uh, we're going and the Marine driving the, the van, like, I don't know. I'm like, he's just, he's just a driver of the van doing what he's uh, doing his duty. Keep stopping. Not at bus stops, but just stops. And I'm like, Hey Lance Corporal, what's going on up there, man? Why are you stopping? He goes, we got stop signs now. He goes, we got stop signs now, sir, and I don't want to go to traffic court. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> On the base in the middle of the <laughs> yeah. So I, I literally in a war zone. So I so and this is this is really as close to the quote as I can remember. I literally said, Well, holy shit. I look at who I was with, I forget who I was with. Call your congressman. Call 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 the news. We won the war. We set up in Traffic court. The United States Marine Corps set up traffic court in a war zone. Wow. Yeah, when I went on that two-minute rant about how we had won the war and we should just all pack up and go to the blank home, that's when the lieutenant colonel in the front seat turned around and said, what else do you think, Captain? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, go on. You know, tell me more. Yeah. Tell me more about your thoughts. That's right. <laughs> like, Are you running for office? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like... Oh, That's and funny. and I realized I was he was a part of the bureaucracy, right? Yeah, he would be one of those traffic court people. What a joke! Traffic, That's a joke. Traffic court. Traffic court. Do you know any Marie? I mean, do you know anybody that caught like a ticket? I mean, I suppose reasonably that's a real thing, right? Like right? some form, a citation. Like, or... What are you going to do? Send me outside the wire? Yeah. Go in there tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, we're sending you on a night off. Like, like, what is the punishment? <laughs> <laughs> so I brought some friends came to visit me. This is before the third pump. Right? Some friends came to visit me um, and on base. I'm at Miramar. And um, we're driving through. And I'm buckled up, right? And I'm in my uniform. And in in my... Uh, passengers buckled up and my friends though are not buckled up in the back seat because they they don't buckle up in the back seat for some reason. Like I, I don't know. The uh the the sentry, the Marine Guard, says, You're gonna have to pull over, sir. Huh? What's up? Well your passengers aren't aren't buckled in the back. I'm gonna have to write you a ticket. Oh, all right, whatever. Literally don't think about it. I'm I'm getting like we're getting ready to go. Like it's it's within thirty days. Like to give two shits less about this ticket this kid's writing. So I just, whatever. My CO gets a call. Hey, your 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 whatever didn't show up uh, for traffic court. Another traffic court story. Didn't show up down at the MAG, the Marine Air Group headquarters, for his traffic court appearance. So my CO walks in and goes, hey, what's up, Captain Razor? Why didn't you go down? I'm like, oh, that thing? We were out, we were out at sea. Like, I'm like, what am I supposed to do? He goes, well, go down there and clear it up. So uh, I go down there, and there is a major. And I felt at first I felt sorry for this guy. Then I didn't. Um, <laughs> there's a major in the Marine Corps whose sole purpose in life was to adjudicate traffic violations on this base. In the middle, by the way, we're still at war. Right? It's not, it's I go six oh seven. This is what this is what your career came to, dude. <laughs> like this is what wow. this this is what you're going to tell your kids you did later in life. I handed out tickets, and so I look at it, and I go, I don't know what you want me to do here, sir. I'm getting ready to go to war. I can stay here and serve out whatever you want me to do, or I can go to war. He literally looked at me and goes, just get out of my office. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, just leave. Like, like, what are you going to do? Send me to war? I'm already going. Like, yeah. just, 
bureaucracy. A waste of time and resources. Oh, yes. Bureaucracy. That's a, that's a, a microcosm of the government. And it yes. Mm -hmm. the yeah. Type of uh, large Just, entity control. Yes. Controlling things. Can we? So if you want to be upset about something this weekend, you can be upset that um, that no one is going to claim the $10 million bounty that we have on the terrorist that is now part of the, the Minister of the Interior for Afghanistan. I know where he is. Can we split the bounty? Uh, you could be upset about that, that they're going to stand up their government on the 20th anniversary of 9-11. You can be pissed off about that all you want. But the thing I think you should be totally upset about is that we are subsidizing these stupid tests that should be, if not given out, just a couple dollars. Couple dollars. So, so you're not burdening people with a choice that I don't think they want to make in their hearts. I don't think people want to do wrong. I think people are good. I think people want to do the right thing. The, the, you might not believe that because what the news gets paid to do is sell you on all the bad because that's what sells. If it, it, bleed, if it bleeds, it leads. And, and you're not going to hear about all the good that so many are doing on this particular weekend to honor all of those people uh, that have perished fighting this war on terror. So I think that's what you should be upset about. And if you're looking, you're like, well, Tim, I, I want to feel good, but really I'm, I just want to be super even more upset. Let's get pissed off at this guy. Who is that? That's Wait. the Dallas Fed president. That's that's <laughs> Bob Kaplan. Let's okay. all collectively send Bob Kaplan some hate mail. What? A D the D bag of the week award goes to Bob Kaplan, who didn't think as the Fed president since 2015, didn't think he should own individual stocks. Didn't think that he's a voting member of Fed policy, that whole thing of don't fight the Fed, this guy is the ultimate front runner. It's not Congress. I thought Congress was the ultimate front runner. I thought that you can't get more front running than the people making the laws. Oh, hold my beer. <laughs> because because this douchebag. How about a bunch of stocks right before we announce? Yeah. Name hey, today, next whoa. time. How about I know exactly the next every move you make. He's the police He's the of the money. He knows yeah. when they're going to push the button. Let me show you this. Please do. Jim, this is a chart of the M2 money supply. When you increase the M2 money supply, you inflate asset prices, which, by the way, is why you've seen an explosion in real estate. Why Bitcoin is moving higher. Why sports cards? Why Hunter runs an underground ring of people that front run Target and Tops.com? It's why mm. stocks have inflated. But this guy, <laughs> this guy is the ultimate criminal. Yeah, for anybody listening. By the way, criminal yeah. in quotes, not really a criminal because it's not illegal what he did. So don't sue me, Bob Kaplan. For anybody listening on podcasts, uh, Tim has an article he's holding up and waving around with this guy's face on it. Just in case they can't see you. This guy is awful. This guy is the scum of the uh, scum. Oh you want to talk about Jay Powell in his F and Ivory Tower sitting up there going, you know, we've got to really help the, the, the people, the underprivileged, the small people, the little people. Fuckers front running everybody. <laughs> the people have no idea what monetary policy is going to be until they release it on a Wednesday at 1 o'clock Central every F and month. And he's buying the stocks ahead of time. When you say it's a rigged game, this is the poster child for it's a rigged game. You should be pissed about this. He probably has all the test strips for COVID. <laughs> That's where they all are. Bob Kaplan has all the test strips for COVID. <laughs> Screw Bob Kaplan. Bob Kaplan. Bob Kaplan is a fill-in-the-blank with your dirtiest word that you can think of. Oh, my gosh. I think you already did. Wow. Scathing Screw up. Look, well, look at this chart, uh, Zach. Uh, yeah, I got it. Hold on now. Yeah. I'm going to get off yeah, good yeah. RX, and I'm going to go SPS. Paint me the picture. I'm going to paint you an effing picture of Bob Kaplan's war crimes. Yeah, yeah. 
So Bob Kaplan, let's get it. I got a weekly chart going here. Uh, October. Let's go back to uh, probably when Bob Kaplan started buying stocks. Hold on a second here. Let's get this make sure. Oh, there's the. Okay, uh, Zacharu, look here. Yes. This is what they call a pandemic flush. Yeah. Yeah. New technical term. <laughs> this is what they call stimulus, right? Love it. Yeah. That chart's going up. That chart's going up. That's not bad. This, right in this time frame, is when Jay Powell and his buddy Bob Kaplan mm -hmm. and some other guy whose name I actually forget. Rosecrans? Someone look up the other name. I should be skewering this guy other two. But, and his other buddy are buying stocks. And, and and knowing full well they're helping the reflation trade. Look at that's oh, right. They're they're stimulating look that at economy. This. That's what they're doing. Look at this. Right, look this at is this is right here. April, where my where my cursor is. April, the be, the beginning of April. Yes. Okay, I'm going to move my cursor. Look at the line. The money supply goes up. It's almost straight up. And look at the chart. The chart goes well, up. Well, that's true. Coincidence? I think not. Bob Kaplan knew they were going to do this. He's in the super secret squirrel meetings. How is he allowed to own stocks? Same reason why government employees are, like Nancy Pelosi. I mean, oh, oh, it's we're making life. We're making parents make these literal with could be life or death decisions about sending their kids to school because is it COVID or not? I can't get a test because one, they're all sold out and two, they're freaking cost prohibitive. But this dirt bag is allowed to front run all of America's pension holders in stocks. He is the ultimate high frequency trading firm. He's literally buying order flow. What do you mean, Tim? He knows that we're going to inject the most amount of money ever injected into any financial system, ever. And he's allowed to buy stocks? Can we send him to jail retroactively to make an example so other people stop doing this? This ain't right, man. Congress does the same thing. Look at this article. This ain't right. Uh, yeah. Grimace, yeah. Grimace, you make me smile. Bob Kaplan, you make me sad. That's producer Price. Here it is. Look at this. Dallas Ka Morning News. Kaplan 64, voting member of the 12-member Fed policy, or as I call it now, the Stock Pickers Club. Uh, right here. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. This year, he's not a voting member. That means he just attends the meeting. And contributes to discussions, but can't vote. <laughs> what a joke. What, oh, Rosengren. Rosengren. Ro Rosengren. Rosengren. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, my gosh. 11 of the 12 regional Fed banks disclosed their heads' financial information from Wall Street. Uh, Kaplan stood out because of his trades. Uh, let me see here. Where are his trades? Uh, all transactions. It tells you what he bought. Give me a second. I should know. I, should, I had it highlighted, but it went away. Oh, here we go, Danny. Uh, he had 27 stocks, funds, or alternative asset holdings valued at over a million dollars each. Each. He had 27, 27 million dollars worth of, uh, including Apple. Alibaba. Let's talk about Alibaba for a second. Who in the right mind would own Chinese stocks right now with what China is doing to their own companies right now? What did, what did Bob Kaplan know? Amazon, Facebook, Google, and Tesla. He also had 22 buying or selling transaction, transactions valued over a million dollars each. So he's not a buy and holder. Bob Kaplan's a trader. Well, what information is he valuing these trades on, Daniel? I wonder what it could be. Are we not raising rates right now because Bob Kaplan is rate sensitive stocks? <laughs> Works are for we, me. Are we letting? Oh, Tim, you're, now you're just being. You're just pissing the world off now with your world theories. The producer <laughs> price index, the, the inflation is 8.3%. Look, look at, look at, look at shock Rick said, show me shocked on. Wait. <laughs> Got him. They're both shocked together. <clears throat> Where's the, oh, that's not the chart. Here's the chart. Look at 
this. Annual inflation rates for the last 10 years. Danny, one of these things is not like the other. Which one do you think it is? Him, it's transitory. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. It's the most dismissive. <laughs> it's transitory. Yeah, right. That's what the Fed keeps saying. Oh, it's transitory. That's what they keep saying. Yeah, th things are things are in flow. I don't right know now. what the word means. That's right. How is this allowed? When people say you you believe in the blue collar worker, you believe in the the creation economy, the creator economy. This is the ultimate insider. This is the ultimate rules for me. Or rules for you, not for me. Well, but the Fed is one of the biggest. I've got an article talking about how they're the biggest creator of equity inequality. They're trying to. They're trying to use that as their mantra. Bob Kaplan. They're 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 guilty. Bob Kaplan is the biggest creator of equity inequality because he has information that nobody else has. If you and well, I, Congress is the same if, way. They if, all if, both if do. anybody out in the free world that works for a company that trades on the on the public markets trades. Like when they try to buy options because oh, they know we, a merger's coming, you're going to you're gonna go to prison. Yeah, yeah. They put Martha Stewart in prison, so and she's America's that, sweetheart. Do you do you know after the economic crisis, they they banned they they Congress because the American people were so upset. They they wrote a bill. They stopped insider trading because they they were allowed to do it. And my former partner even said on the air, "You watch." They're going to take, they, they won't be able to stand it because they love making yeah. millions yep. and they love the insider. They're going to tack it onto some bill at 11 o'clock at night. Sure enough, three months, it lasted three months, Tim. I they pass it. it again so they could start insider trading if again. There was, it's legal. If, for it, if it was true that we cared about income inequality, there would be no government official allowed to trade other than, other than the TSP plan. Which is what the military has. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have you have the C yeah. fund, the common stock fund, yep. S small cap yeah. fund, I international, but F fixed income. This <laughs> is the highest level. All right, Dan, stop showing off. <laughs> I know the TSP <laughs> knows them. Yeah, <laughs> like that's what they should. They, they, like that's that's all they should be allowed to do. Manage that to the hilt. This is not a level playing field. Well, Tim, you've wasted my time. I've listened to you for I don't know how long we've been talking. But you've wasted my time because I can't change any of this. And you know what? That's what they want you to believe. Mm. And it's probably true that Bob Kaplan, uh, big fan of the show, by the way, uh, Bob Kaplan, <laughs> not anymore, <laughs> um, is not, nothing's going to happen to Bob Kaplan. Even if he resigns, nothing's going to happen to Bob Kaplan. They didn't, they didn't put any of the Wells Fargo people in prison, right? It, when when Wells Fargo was putting those ridiculous um, uh, burdens onto the employees, and they were not, none of those fraudulently people, making up fake accounts, nobody went yep. to prison for that. Yeah, the I, I didn't think there'd be anything more than the egregiousness of what Wells Fargo did. Like, and 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 everybody was culpable. I forget her name now because I because I uh, I used to say it like every week. She went back to Nebraska and she's in hiding. It's like a Wells Fargo. She was she was she was she was she was, it, she was in on the grift. Okay. And um, the the CEO, I mean, John Stump. Stump. Man, this is us commoners man we're, we're we're not we're not in the Kaplan's. so an ignorant question from a podcast producer who does not know much about stocks at all uh can anybody not buy stock is there anybody in the country that's barred from doing that genuinely no no we can do that they can't insider trade meaning they got inside knowledge right and they trade ahead of that so if i so if a ceo yeah talk, talk, i take him we go to lunch i'm friends and, and, he, and he says it's all and going he down, tells me he too. tells me yeah. We got. We're going to just blow out earnings, or conversely, he goes, "Man, we're going to have a huge miss." Yeah, and down. I go trade on that. Mm -hmm. I go to jail. Congress, Nancy Pelosi, knows something's about to be passed. Knows that say Microsoft's about to get a massive contract sure, with the Defense Department, and she goes and buys a bunch of Microsoft options, yeah. uh, which her husband did, and um, and makes millions. That's yeah. legal. So they have inside information. Right. Tim's saying that this guy knows the minute that they're going to push the button and add trillions into the economy yeah. of money mm -hmm. 
and he can buy stocks right ahead of that. Where are the, the timings of these trades? Like where, where like there should be like we're so distracted right now with other things, but the, like yeah. there should be timing. Like there should be an investigation into the tr- timing of these things. Yeah. He has an unfair advantage. And every for all the talk of inequality, for all the talk of truly wanting to help people, you have to at some point make an example of one of these people to stop others from doing it. You'll never get to a fair playing field. And then someone's going to come back to me and I'm going to circle it back now and we'll get back to stocks. Someone's going to come back. Well, Tim, you said we live in a capitalistic society and there's always going to be haves and haves. And I'm going to tell you that capitalism is, capitalism is not perfect. Yeah, better than it's better than all. It's not. It's, it's not perfect. Got, yeah, but this, but cap- capitalism and insider trading are different. That's that's it. that's different. that's exactly it's it. completely different. Yeah. yeah, this this guy knows like like I'm good. He could he could easily say, well, I'm going to buy all the stocks on a dip in the pandemic. Do you, do you think like Jay Powell just woke up in the middle of the night? I imagine Jay Powell sleeps in one of those nineties. Uh, that's like a, like an overshirt with like the the, the circle like the, the pointy head. hat. Yeah, with the pointy hat yes. that flops over. I could, I see that too. I don't know. Yeah, why I, I can you pull that. one of those up for me? Well, 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 even, hat, well, yeah. well, even so, here's an, on the flip side of that. If all of a sudden they see their stocks, his million dollar positions, uh, going down, like all of a sudden they get in trouble. Now they're only worth yeah. seven fifty or half a million. Does he go? Hey, we need some stimulus. I need some help for my stock. Like, like, he, I mean, it's, like, it's like the Dallas Morning News goes. Now he's not a voting member, and, and so it, what? And it's like he's in the room. It's like, can you can you see Bob Kaplan in the back? <laughs> hey Jay, I got an idea. <laughs> Bob, you're not a voting member. No, no, no. Here's the thing: more money. <laughs> yeah. He's just sitting in the back row, making yelling suggestions, stimulate it. Give him more money. Well, yeah. Well, but the main point is he he gets to see the vote. He knows when the votes when well, it's happening. And it says he's part of discussions. He has influence over those voting. He's literally yes. influencing well, but the people. I, the, in but the, the room. whole point is he's there in the room when exactly. they take the vote. Yes. So he knows what the vote yeah. is. Even if he doesn't get to raise his hand, yeah, right. he gets to talk to everybody voting. All right. Well, let's 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 talk about stocks. We 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 sure. definitely <laughs> might be true. made our point. Yeah. We've driven it home. Literally, have gotten three things on my sheet. <laughs> Look, you should know, stock nerds, that inflation is a real reason. You know it's bad, okay? I just, yeah, I just want to point one thing out to you, uh, inflation. I'm going to go down. And it's related to all that yeah. trillions of stimulus they're printing. Yeah, Alex, I want to um, – oh, oh, this is the wrong article. I wanna, I'm going to go to you next, Alex, okay? So uh, give me a second. Look, stock nerds, if anybody talks to you about an inflation number or a pricing index number, that does not include food. Uh, energy, or what's the third? Uh, trade services. If they say excluding food, energy, or trade services, like it does right here. Well, CPI, X, food, and energy, they specifically created that to, to make it sound mute. It's as dumb as, as, as Bob Kaplan being able to trade stocks. Because, <laughs> because you eat and travel. You eat and you buy fuel. Exactly. That's, that's, that's your second and third biggest expense besides your mortgage payment. And in, in some situations, your food is more expensive than your mortgage. So let me just give you this final paragraph here in the article, uh, which I tried to highlight, but it doesn't really highlight too well. So let's do this. If you're watching along, I think you can keep up with that. Yeah. yeah. Prices for final demand goods rose 1% for the month, pushed primarily by a 2.9% gain in foods, which in turn came from, listen, wait for it here, Daniel, an 8.5% surge in meat prices. Slaughtered poultry surged 11%. Prices fell for iron, steel, and diesel fuel. Now, I've got some thoughts on this. Hang on. Slaughtered poultry. Do you know the government has actually been paying farmers to destroy some crops and destroy both food and animal crops? I got got some relatives that are farmers up in Michigan. I got hot takes on this. Oh, really? The the government is, is driving the food inflation. Hold on. Is this our best show without Don? <laughs> <laughs> Put Don up. <laughs> Where's the Don? <laughs> I mean, Zach's got hot takes. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Too yeah. bad Don's not here yeah. <laughs> to hear this. That's- so, no, there's farmers all over different states yeah. putting up videos on social media saying they're, they're paying me to destroy my crops. I don't, I don't know why. For the sake of my family's privacy, I'll say it for after the show. No, Really? Come okay, on. so so I've I've got a I've got a family member who uh, uh, does. Cha- I, don't, I don't have a camera throwing me, but I've got here. I'll throw up. 
I've got a camera member who does cherries. And um, oh, oh, yeah, they grow uh, a bunch of cherries. Michigan cherries. cherries. Michigan, delicious. Yes. Uh, yeah. Every every once in a while, I don't know if they do this every year, but they'll grow all their stuff. They'll use all their what's pesticides and whatnot. They grow a full orchard full of cherries, and then they let them all die. They just let them die. They why? let them freeze. And and I say why? And they say because to get a shaker out here, to get staff out here, to put all of this stuff down, like to to, to get all these, it, it's a ton of money. And then you take it to market. Mm -hmm. Cherries don't actually make that much money compared to everybody else. I stand to make more money letting all of this die. Claiming it as lost goods and getting it as a write-off, and oh, I do actually wow. harvesting and selling. Yeah, is a bigger profit to grow it all and then let it go to waste. You know well, what? Well, what I'm talking about is the government's actually trying to control supply and demand. You know what? Um, you know what's interesting about that? Bob Kaplan's a farmer. He has money trees. <laughs> <laughs> so here's here's the thing uh, about this. Uh, the, it's this last bit, right? Like we can get up in arms that meat surged 8.5 percent. And it's not like, by the way, it's not like meat was cheap last month, and it, it, it just surged. Prices fell for iron, steel, and diesel. And look, this is, this is kind of an issue, stock. Let me show you something. Uh, I don't want to rehash. I'm just going to say it once, and I'm not going to go into it. You, even though prices fell for iron, steel, and diesel, you are not seeing relief at the pump. You're not seeing relief in uh, housing goods, housing prices, or the goods to make homes. And, it's, and, it, and it has everything to do, in my mind, with wages, because wages are not transitory. The only way people can get – they might be getting a break on prices on iron, steel, and diesel, or whatever the other one was. Uh, they're not going to pass it on to you. Just like Starbucks never passes on the savings when coffee is less per pound because they've got increasing expenses. But let me show you the transports. Let me show you how I lied to you. This is a weekly chart. So the weekly chart has it at the 40 week. But let's go to a day. So it's really interesting. Like there, and, and you can say, well, Tim, that's because the airlines broke. And, and look, how, how with trucking, so in demand are the, you know, and rail shipments and can't get things out of the port. Like we have a demand for shippers. Like the, and air, airlines aren't the majority of the IOIT. Okay, there's something else afoot here, and I think it goes back to a point we were making last week. And if you want to listen to last week's show, Stock Nerds and Market, this is what a professional broadcaster does. They stop their story, they show you where to find. You know, I'm putting in our own advertisement here, where to find last week's show. Bitcoin to the Moon talks about this, talks about uh, everything I'm about to cover here with um, with pricing and 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 the transport. We're not going to make our GDP. That's that's the bottom line. We're not going to make our GDP because there's not enough workers and there's not going to be enough commerce generated. They can stimulate to the hill, but they're not going to make our GDP. I said that last week and I told you I didn't see any research on that. And then I go home and I'm looking through uh, Twitter and I, and I texted it to the fellas. The, the GDP now, the New York Fed, after the jobs report last week was so bad, they stopped reporting the GDP now number because it's now known that we're not going to make our gross domestic product for the projected gross it's domestic. It's going to be product. a bad report, so we don't want to report it. Exactly. And they're going to blame Delta, the Delta variant for this, but there, there's something else afoot here, and it that something else afoot is inflation, and you're you're eventually. You realize that, like Hunter spending forty dollars for two burgers, two fries, and two cokes for him and his fiance, isn't sustainable. That uh, a four hundred dollar Uber ride to the airport isn't sustainable. That lumber, like like, let's put in old LBS here. LBS lumber is down. For, look at this lumber chart from seventeen hundred to four ninety. But you're not seeing a price break at the Home Depot. Lumber, I can tell you, with a thousand percent factuality, accuracy, factuality. Yeah. No, factuality sounds. I think that's a word. Factuality. <laughs> yeah. I, <don't> <laughs> I haven't heard it before, but factuality. Factual. Eh, I like factuality. Yeah, I know you do. That's yeah. why I'm pretty sure it's not. A word. <laughs> 
no, I got a dictionary entry. <laughs> that's, 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 that's a Tim Sniglet. No, uh, that's a Tim. That, st- factual is an adjective. Factuality is the noun form of factual. So technically, so factuality a is actually a word. According to Mary. Oh, Mother, Tim, even yeah. a blind squirrel. I don't believe Hold it. On. What, what, what does Alex do? <laughs> That's yeah. the one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're not going to see. I can I can tell you uh, with the shirt that lumber prices are are still going up. You're not getting a break on lumber. I know this. I know this firsthand. And so <sighs> this is a problem. Like if the things that you the things you want to go up in price, in my opinion, where's that article? The things you want to go up in price are for good inflation, right? Like homes, you know, like home building is continuing to surge. Trucking is like really going, like you don't run planes on diesel, you run planes on jet A. And so I, these are going down. The inputs are going down for what I would consider to be good expansionary inflation, right? And, and the bad expansionary inflation is meat, the thing, you know, meat and, um, and uh, food items. That's a problem. Like that's the... Your wages, your wages going up over four percent for the year, have not kept up with um, inflation. Let me see if I can find that. What's what's inflate? Oh, the inflation number is five point four percent at the end of July. Okay, wages for the year are at four plus percent. Here, at the end of July. Inflation's at 5.4%. Well, well, look, you just said a little while ago it was 1% month over month. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you annualize that, that's 12% a year. Well, hold on. I mean, hold on, know, to, I, hold on to your hat, stock nerds, because on September 14th at 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 Central, we're going to find out just how bad inflation is getting. Amazing. How we've ended up in this predicament. You know who's eating high off the hog and doesn't care about the price of hog? Who? Bob Cap. <laughs> Alex, what you got, brother? By the way, Alex, when people want to find your work, <laughs> where do they go to find your work? Tell me, bro. Well, our work, too. It's on YouTube. You go to Revere Asset <laughs> and uh, you see a big red box. Subscribe and uh, yeah, like. Man. Make sure you share. Did I just lose Alex? No, he's still on. Oh, he's still there? There we are. I think. Can Alex, you guys hear me? I can yeah, hear you are. now. Yeah. Now it yeah. sounded like yeah. that for a second. You're good. Yeah. Right. So right. you go to you to the Revere. Just type in Revere Asset YouTube. And then about once a week, Alex will, will he's like stealth. He's like a V2 bomber. He just. Yeah. When, when the timing's right, which I've been luckily the last few weeks have been okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so he'll drop a video in there. And if you're subscribed and you have on your phone, on your mobile device, ding, you know, touch the bell, ring the bell, you will get an alert that the new video is dropped. And these videos are timely. It could be like next day, go buy the option for edification purposes only. And so research. Research. Yeah, I got so- I got something for you right now, currently. And Let's ooh, do it. All right. I gotta like I gotta bat it's gonna be, I'm going to keep talking. It's a theme and it's going to parlay into one trade. Okay. Right. So I I want you to pull up these charts kind of like kind of fast so we can see what's going on on the dailies. Sure. Pull up Visa. Everywhere you want to be. And then MasterCard. Hold on a second. Hang on. He's trying to just get Visa. I got Visa. Got it. Hold on. I'm and trying then, to and think. Then, yeah. And on. then what AXP. Is, what is MasterCard's? Uh, a- uh, AXP is. Uh, is I know, a, I know yeah. AXP. I was thinking of their slogans. What is MasterCard? AXP. Don't leave. Yep. I don't leave home all without. Right, so, okay, you see a trend. They're they're all trending down. So, right. Okay, what's going on here? Now, I want you to pull up AFRM, a firm. Oh, hey, uh, you brother, you're leading me where I want to talk to you next. Right? Oh, okay. Ooh. So, <clears throat> what is what I think is going on is that the money is no longer going to be borrowed from credit cards and it's going to be a buy now pay letter type process which a firm and lending club upstart type companies these fintech companies all offer yes. now a firm oh, I got, it here. got they reported earnings last night and it was going it was gapping up after hours and this morning in my beta test portfolio I happened to buy some call options 
And Tim, they have gone up 100%. I already sold half. That's see, that's the implied volatility expanding. By the yeah. way, if you, if you want to learn about implied volatility and expansion, Wednesday's video, I talk about that. Now, real quick, Alex, can I, mm -hmm. I want to talk about, I, this is on my note sheet. This is not me ad -lib. You can tell it's on my note sheet because I am prepared. <laughs> okay, uh, I, I, I like the buy now, pay later speech. I think that it makes a lot of sense. I think that uh, you're not going to steal Alex's thunder. Are you? <laughs> I want to talk about the trade, though. Yeah, hold I, on. I I'm going to I'm going to get to the trade. Uh, okay. But it, this this isn't, dude. I, Alex uh, Alex uh, is both thunder and lightning. <laughs> I'm not stealing anything from <laughs> Alex. Right. So uh, a third of U.S. consumers used buy now pay later services. Uh, a third of the consumers have fallen behind on one or more payments. Now look, mm -hmm. this is not me. Uh, condemning any of these companies. I like these companies a lot. Uh, what I'm saying, I don't know what the, what the uh, rates are, uh, the, the fall behind rates are for- Default the, rates. Thank you, thank you. Default rates. Dude, I'm producing this show like live on the air. I'm allowed to forget a word. I came up with factuality. No, I was just about to say, come on, keep it factuality. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, what the default rates are for Visa Master, I don't know what those are. So take this with a grain of salt. But a third of U.S. consumers who used buy now, pay later services have fallen behind on one or more payments. And 72% of those said their credit scores have declined. But, you're, but these companies, they limit the amount you can buy and they're not, um, they don't check High your risk. credit. They don't check your credit. So that, that's like their attraction. So if you're coming like right out of school or you're younger without an established credit score, these companies are fantastic. Now, until a firm made that deal with Amazon, which isn't full, fully launched yet, um, a firm's biggest customer was Peloton. Mm -hmm. That's why Peloton sold a ton of bikes because people were breaking up the payments, right? And so, uh, so now this is interesting about this study. So the study conducted by software from Qualtrics survey. So these are self-admitted. So it's probably higher. Like people don't want to admit that they're behind on payments typically. Sure, sure. So it's probably most likely higher. But it's interesting. Um, the 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 transformation. This is not. Like everything old is new again. It's weird. Like this is someone who's older uh, might be going, what the hell is the attraction here? And a lot of it is they're giving you the credit. Mm -hmm. and, and if you want to know why they're giving you the credit, all you have to do is look at this chart. That money is so, money, the, the system is flush with money and interest, interest rates are so low that these companies with the default rate, it's factored into their business model and make a lot of money. They've opened up the net. And if you've seen, like, I look, I think this is an amazing, uh, let's look at, uh, real quick, Alex, if this steals your thunder, I, I'm going to apologize in advance. But a firm uh, reported uh, solid guidance and 71% revenue. Okay, 71%. Danny, in the quarter, uh, they did $261.8 million of revenue. This company didn't exist a little while ago, you know, like, like that, that's a, that's a lot. And then the, the, the next line is, but they lost 48 cents per share. And that they're, 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 you can, I don't have the argument. Well, if they're losing money, is it really that great of a company? Look at the stock price. People pay for growth. Investors pay for growth. Well, if it continues to grow, it'll be profitable very quickly. Uh, uh, yes. And so, but I mean, Amazon lost money for years. And then all right. of a sudden, yeah. But look at well, the look, look at what Square has done since buying um, the Australian company, which I literally forget the name of. It was just on top of my head. Square Square acquired an Australian buy now pay later company, and the stock really isn't performing. PayPal, it's going to come down to uh, PayPal, I believe, which mu looks much better than Square, and it's going to come down to the Affirms, the Clarinas uh, of the world. Go on, Alex. I'm sorry. Yeah. So if you pull up a five minute chart. Yeah, man. Intraday of a firm. Mm -hmm, so the mm. stock right now, I think it's trading over 1400, 1400% average daily volume. So that to me, when it, when it gapped up and then it was around that 110 level, you see how it kind of pulled back and then it yep. came. It, yeah. That's a, if, if you want to get in the stock and you're watching intraday for those active traders, that's a really good spot. It could always use like a tight 3% loss, a stop loss. Uh, for your for your entry, but now you would have been up, I think nine percent from that one ten area, yeah. and that's why buying gaps sometimes it can work. Now this is sticking. So right so now, it so it gapped volume. so it gapped and held. 
That's what he's saying. A Captain Hell. That's Captain a really Hell. good sign. And that that's not that's not me or grandma or you know Timmy next door buying the stock. That's institutions with big money that are pouring the, into that name that the, are that are making that stock go up. The, the easiest, volume is obvious. The easier when you spot these, and by the way, uh, Alex's videos do this for you, stock. They, they, they're helping you spot this. And if you watch enough of Alex's videos over time, you'll, you'll be able to start getting the, the flow of where Alex's brain is going and his mind is trying to take you. The easiest mm -hmm. trade to do here, if you don't want now, you can buy calls, right? Which, mm -hmm. when it works, man, it's, there's no better feeling in the world, right? When you're up 100% on the trade. Right? Oh, yeah. No better feeling. You're walking on sunshine. The, <laughs> the, uh, the easiest trade to do, what, what series did you buy, Alex? I bought the I bought the October one tens. Okay, so he went out monthlies and he bought the he went out to the monthlies and he bought the at the money calls for when he bought. The I stock. already sold half into that strength. Yeah. So the uh, the alternate trade, profits. which um, is not because these things can have they can have pullbacks right there. When this yeah. happens, man, these you remember these ones. Uh, but when they pull back, the easiest trade to do is sell the put credits. Yeah, it's a it's a bullish trade. And what you're doing is you're saying you're giving your so you could sell an at the money you can sell the 110 put and buy the 105 or you could go ten dollars right one 100 for protection and now you've defined your risk right you defined your risk it carries more risk but you define it no it doesn't carry it carry I think it carries less risk because the theta because of the theta decay so every day that it stays above 110 wow, right look at that thing intraday is getting yeah crazy. and so the, oh <laughs> this that? is a great can we can we talk about float I want to talk about float. Do you mind if I talk about yeah, float talk with about it? The, I think, yeah. You know what, Tim? Can you, what's the um, float on that? Did they flip the float today on that stock? Watch this. When I say flip the float, they traded the actual amount that's outstanding share count. They, they, have, yeah, yeah, they have 265, yeah. 265 million is the outstanding. So 35, um, 35 million shares times 120. Yeah, they, if I'm not mistaken, they flipped the float. So, but the, the, these companies are coming out with so many shares. Like that's 265 million shares of a firm. Okay. <laughs> the stock's up 35%. Yeah. That's insane. And then, and then look at like a company like RH. And, and by the way, if you don't wonder where I'm looking stock notes, it's right here. RH, 21 million shares. Um, uh, CMG. 29 million, 28 million shares, 29 million shares. And then AFRM, 265 million shares. It, yeah. They're coming out, they, they, they come out so big that you have to have these kind of breakthrough relationships, which it's the break. They don't even have the, the uh, it's not implemented yet. The, um, no, like, uh, with, with Amazon. Amazon no. Yeah. And so no, I, I only have one more either. one more thing. It was I, I'm going to review all the other trades on the yeah. next bonus stock video. But okay. if you could pull up those net, I really want to track those net leaps with our viewers. I had a couple of people reach out and emailed me about them. Let's do so it. If you could pull up a uh, net and then the January 2023 140s. I noticed there were some buyers in that today, and and uh, yeah, that's not normal to see that kind. Of, those across the board too, 135, 130, 140. I own. We're in the 140s, but. The good thing I'm seeing is that on the down days and when net has kind of not traded well or it's faded, those have been holding up. This is all so Alex's that, people right here. Yeah, those are my people. <laughs> those are your peeps. <laughs> yeah. the, that, there, there's the open interest at the, at the 140 strike. Those are all. If you, I'm not joking. Like, there's no reason to be in the 140. Look, look, look at all the. Uh, <laughs> there's there's nobody right, and then the. <laughs> It's I I I spotted uh someone there's another someone's in there there's a big guy big 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 lady I don't know who, who what gender they are but they're smart I, I want to watch you smart. stumble over this follow. tell oh, me more about this big say big lady tell me I, I was gonna say yeah. tell me more about this when big I say lady big I mean they got a big portfolio excuse me <laughs> he means it's an institutional player yes. Thank you. Don't, don't help can him. You, I wanna, can you bleep that out? Can you bleep that out? Cut that whole thing. We don't. We don't edit the we show. We got. A, we got enough to bleep out with Tim. We, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I think it's, there's a, there is an institution in there. Um, What's up with the line? That's a lot of money. It's a, what, it's a you, few million. Dollars. Were you going to do a line today? I'm sorry. 
What's a line? I actually don't know what a line's doing. It's just popped in my head. A line is holding up near all time highs. I think it's at a seven thirty a share, right? Right, Hunter, or seven twenty something. What were the uh, mm-hmm. what were the um? The I don't options. have any calls on that though. That was a stock. I, oh, that was just a stock. I'm sorry. I thought you did. Call. That was just a stock, and so was Team and PNW. Understood. Yep. Oh, that's, right, that's it for me. That's uh, it. I want to. I don't want to take too much time from a uh, uh, Hunter's got a lot to share. Um, Hunter, Hunter, Hunter. So here's the thing. I screwed Hunter out of talking about uh, the parlay last week. I told him we would do a show just separate about the parlay. I'll get my act We're together. We're going to have to Hunter. do that next week. I know. Yeah, yeah. I know. I'm going to do it separately with Hunter because I think there's a, there's a big conflict, so like he believes, between uh, sports betting, stocks, risk analysis. I believe it all exists. Uh, I'm genuinely interested in it. But stocks, Hunter, stocks, because you have a fan club, and that fan club does not like <laughs> uh, well, believe it or not, so I've I've got, got quite a, uh, and I do have four lays. I'm just skipping uh, from Hunter this week. That is desired. However, uh, Why? I'm, and not, I do, I'm, yeah, I'm hearing I, every other word from Hunter. Hunter, you're, you're 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 skipping a little bit. Hunter. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Let's I don't really skip. don't really know what to do to fix it. Um, oh, I, I do, I it's, do. It's called uh, vamping, and I'm going to tell you how to vamp. You just talk about vamping. It allows the internet to do what the internet does. And then we gently say, Alex, can you hear me? Alex? Yes. Okay. And now, Hunter, are you back with us? Here. Yeah, there you go. I, did I fix it? I know. Uh, mm-hmm. All right, go ahead, Hunter. Hunter, give it another shot. Yeah, let's see. It is not working. It's not working. <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> okay. I, I, have, I have some of the stuff he was going to share if, if – if, Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what. Over what he was going to talk having, about. If, yeah. he, if not, uh, we can get uh, Hunter's work uh, next yeah. week. We're right? having some internet connections in the studio. Yeah. Internet internet connectivity out, problems. Uh, yeah. What's that, Hunter? I don't know. Oh, it's tough. It makes I, it pain. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'll take it. Hey, hey, so so because Don is out today, and by the way, you know Tim was talking about all this stuff because of nine eleven. So Don is actually, you know how when Congress has the joint meeting and the president comes to give the uh, uh, state of the union state of the union and one of his one of his cabinet has to stay away to be the designated survivor yeah. don right now is a designated survivor he's in the ram rank the revere asset mobile market intelligent command center he's gone so hunter is doing the uh the video tonight don's normal right. 21 over 21 video there you go. so hunter you can actually go over all of that stuff tonight on your video that you were going to say today on the show. That's a great idea. Uh, that sounds good to me. Oh, now that he's back. Now it seems to be working. Are you back, Hunter? Count to 10. No, I'm, I can still see my, my video skipping around a little bit. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Okay, spotty. Well, that's a great plan. So to recap, if you want all of Hunter's research, you want to order a Hunter Fan Club t-shirt, mug, or hat, what I want you to do, Guys, can we get those? <laughs> <laughs> Prince Valiant is a well different Hunter looks. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the different looks of Hunter. Yeah, we have like a, a like well, a, can Hollywood I, can squares and different. Pictures. I can, I can just fine. Well, yeah, I but, do now that I'm back. If I'm going to cover every all the stocks that are going to go up on Monday and the ones that will go down on Tuesday in tonight's video, I might as well share these parlays. Uh, that I do have finalized and uploaded. Um, yes. One. So, yes. Real quick. quick for internet oh my gosh. Go. We have thwarted Danny. God, I love that. So Don's out. Hunter's going to do the video. Going to cover all that stuff. Now we can do betting. Let's do it. You got two minutes, Hunter. Right. We've already ran right, way yeah. over because of Tim. Not true. Okay. So uh, listen close here. We've got a safe parlay, a medium, and two risky. So I'm going to go in that order. Uh, first, the safe parlay, which is my selection. I have the Packers, Chiefs, and Panthers winning. So a $30 bet pays out about $65 on uh, that parlay. And this is for edification purposes. You're strictly betting on winners here. You're not betting on the spread. You're not betting on... All three have to win, though. Correct. All three have to win. Who who were those Uh, teams again? Packers, Chiefs, and Panthers. Nice. Is that with points bet? Who's that that with? uh, It's a a DraftKings Sportsbook. I have a friend that lives where it's legal. Yeah. Um, the medium bet, 49ers, Packers, Broncos, Panthers, and Rams, $15 to win 65. And then here's the juicy ones. Okay. The risky bets, a $10 bet, 
This one is Colts, Panthers, Cardinals, Dolphins, Giants, and Steelers. That is a $10 bet to win $700. And then Ooh. lastly, another risky, another $10 like bet, that. Cardinals, Dolphins, Seahawks, Bengals, and Giants, a $10 bet to win 450 So there, there are still two bets that haven't been finalized by the other members of uh, the Underground Betting Coalition. So <laughs> the those, will be, betting coalition. <laughs> those will be added uh, over the weekend. Uh, ideally, we'll have all of them. But uh, Is this guy the <laughs> – <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mr. Kaplan yeah. gives us all our tips. On, yeah, I was about uh, to say, yeah. if you called and cleared it with him. The <laughs> underbound funny. betting coalition. That's great. Hey, um, did you see the $10 bet that turned into 80000 There was a parlay. It's on uh, Dan Ravel's Twitter feed. It was a $10. 80000 Yeah, Hunter, did you see it? I have not seen it. Oh, my gosh. I would vamp and, and find it on the screen right now. But it was a $10, $10 bet. You must have picked every team playing that week. It was it was an amazing uh, parlay. It came from Win Sportsbook. Um, can do you, do you have it, Zach? Can you find it? Uh, uh, yeah, give me a minute. Let's yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah. So it was a ten dollar uh, parlay. I'll was tell you it what. just winners and losers, or was it like spreads and everything? Other things. It, I'll I'll pull it up if Zach. Uh, can that, get... Oh, might have lost one again. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, Danny. I'll tell you what. Tell us. Give, I have I have a one last thing. Give us an. You outro. do. I. Uh, Yes, I do. Oh my gosh! Give okay. give us a one. I have a one last thing. Okay, give us uh, the normal outro, and then I'll. Folks, listen. If you like what you heard, please tell a friend, tell a neighbor, just send them to revereasset dot com, and they can sign up. They can uh, uh, sign up for our daily market insight. It goes out every night. The market is open. That's where all the red meat, the red red meat is. It's about ten to fifteen minutes long every night. The market's open. It goes right into your inbox. They'll also get this webinar on saturday morning um we won't spam them or reach out to them in any way it's up to them to reach out to us if they want a complimentary portfolio review just ask questions or have a stock they'd like us to look at and go over or even talk about on the show um, you can email any of us with questions at dan at revereasset.com don at revereasset.com tim hunter or alex at revereasset.com or you can always call us old school at 855 Real Wealth. Here's, here's the bet. This is not my one last thing. Can you see that? Is that I know it's a 14 leg parlay. It's a 14 leg parlay. Okay. Uh -huh. $10. Kind of see that. Uh, the odds were plus 79,900. I mean, just amazing odds here. And so the, the person hit the 14 leg parlay, wagered $10, turned it into just, just under 80,000. That's why I like parlays. Uh, yep. I, I, I'm I mean, 50 after the government gets their, their piece. Really, man? You're going to steal that guy's joy? <laughs> Come on, man. I tell him, tell him. Yo. Um, I do have one quick thing since I didn't get to uh, people for me. Okay. Um, kind of hear you. Yeah. But in, uh, in tonight's video, I'm going to go over some, some important levels oh, as well as leading stocks. As soon as he talks, sucks. Yeah, 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 yeah. As soon as you stock talks, yeah. Hunter, you get cut out. You're going to go over some important levels. It's a board thing. So watch Hunter's video. So one last thing, Stockers, before, before we get going. That's there. unfortunate. Like, like it's almost as if Bob Kaplan is stopping Hunter from talking oh, stocks. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay to talk about sports, but God forbid you talk about stocks. That's yeah. his domain. You're poaching on his territory. Yeah, I know. On the sensor. internet pulse. Yeah. See, I can hear him just fine now. Yeah. Well, I gave two stock ideas uh, in the Wednesday video. Bob Kaplan doesn't control me. So here's Home Depot uh, just taking off. So look. Um, and the trades were based on, there's a couple of things here. With Home Depot. The lumber spread. <laughs> the <lot of> <laughs> That's right. It sounds dirty when you say it. Um, so what is day? There's Wednesday. So it bounced off to 21. That's the daily chart, right? And I, I, I like buying trades off to 21, but when you start taking them down to like a four hour chart, or it's, it's for me, it's a lot easier to see a 195 minute chart. There's two bars a day. So two bars a day. And you can go back. There's, there's right here's uh, Friday. There's Thursday. Wednesday's like right in here. And so you can start seeing things develop off this uh, four hour, 21 or 19 minute, 21. But it's the weekly chart that I really like of Home Depot. And so this weekly chart, I think, uh, reaches up to the old high. And so you can see on the weekly chart, it, it incorporates a lot of the things that we talked about. So last week you did bounce off the knee. You're not, too, you're not extended beyond, you weren't. 
earlier this week, mm-hmm. extended beyond one ATR. I don't like to think I don't like to buy things at one ATR. I think that they you'll get a you'll get a price better price when it falls back. So now you're starting to come up to this ATR. The next level to clear is this two ATR, which is just happens to be right near the old high. If you were to get a three ATR move at Home Depot, that reaches up into that 350. 350 is a big round number. So that has potential, right? And so I, I like that. But I also really like the other trade I talked about. Probably like it. Chipotle. Chipotle, uh, this is a daily chart. Chipotle is what a monster stock. Just holding serve. Like it it it's a thing of beauty. Like it, it's just holding serve. And I, I'm doing more research into it. Danny and I were having a pretty interesting discussion about float size. Like the size of float. Restoration hardware, Chipotle, small floats, you know, twenty nine million, you know, is ridiculous for Chipotle compared to a firm with its two hundred and fifty plus million. So uh, but the trade really came from this 195 minute chart, and this is my jam right here. This this uh, pullback and then this move higher that consolidates on a four hour time frame. That that right there is that's my bread and butter pattern all day long. And so holding serve on a pretty mildly weak day uh, for the for the markets. Uh, I like those two. So I think uh, I think that's enough. I think we gave them some stocks, and I think they know where to go find Hunter. All right. We'll talk to you next week on Your Money.